Loosen all control arm, sway bar, and track bar bolts, both front and rear, but don't remove the bolts yet. Remove the front drive line at the differential and support it. Raise the axle and remove the shocks. Disconnect the sway bar links and retain the hardware. We'll use that later. Spread the bracket and remove it from the brake line. Discard the bracket. Extend the ABS lines and the breather tube. Lower the axle and remove the front springs. Remove the spring isolator and the bump stop. Measure down from the bottom of the spring bucket three and a half inches and mark it. Tape works great as a cut guide. Position the speed bump support tube with the flat on the inside. Mark the holes for drilling. Drill one small pilot hole and finish with a 3 8 drill. Bolt the support tube into position. Trim any excess material until the support tube and the original tube are flush with each other. Test fit the speed bump. If there's any slag in the tube that restricts its install, just clean the tube out as required. Repeat the drilling process for those remaining two holes using the support tube as a guide. Coat the speed bump with silicone to help with noise and corrosion. Put some pressure on the speed bump to make sure it's completely seated and install the retainer clamp. And then put the factory insulator back into place. Install the shocks with the small shim, if present, between the top washer and nut. The reservoir mount can be positioned where desired. A good reference is to leave a half an inch above the frame with the corner of the bracket a half an inch from the large frame hole. Mark and pre-drill using a quarter inch bit. Use the self-tapper screws and mount the bracket. And then clamp the reservoir into place. Prepare the nut cert for install. The mounting hardware will be used for both install as well as mounting. Stack the spacer on the bolt with the lock washer in the spacer recess, followed by the nut cert. The assembly will fit into a factory hole located on the inside of the frame between the steering gear and a motor mount. Use an inch and a sixteenth end wrench on the flats of the spacer and a three-eighth socket on the bolt. Tighten to crush the nut zert into the frame. Now an air tool will really speed up the process, but final torque with an end wrench. With the nut zert installed, remove the bolt and reinstall it with the limit strap. This time, position the bolt, then the washer, followed by the limit strap, the spacer, then the lock washer, and bolt it up against the frame. The axle side of the limit strap will require a half inch hole. Now the position of the hole is not critical. Drill the hole in the axle spring bucket on the inside rear corner. Measure one inch from the rear of the spring bucket and one inch up from the bottom. Mark it and drill. The spring retainer bracket will be used as a guide for drilling the mounting holes. Now the driver's side will be on the inside rear corner of the spring bucket, while the passenger side retainer will be mounted to the inner front corner of the spring bucket. The bracket has a 3 8 hole in it. We will drill a half inch hole in the spring bucket just to give us some adjustment. 
Install the front lower control arms one at a time. Now starting with the driver's lower arm, remove the bolts and drop the arm. Install the new arm, install the front or the axle side bolt first with the bend to the inside and the sticker to the rear. Use the existing mounting hardware, but include the square washers. These washers will index between the tabs on the axle bracket. Tighten them just enough to maintain washer position, but still allow that arm to move freely. We will repeat this same process on the passenger side. Don't tighten any of the suspension bolts until the Jeep is back on the ground and at right height. Before we install the front coil springs, make sure that the brake line is routed to the inside of the shock. Install on the spring on the driver's side is really pretty straightforward. On the passenger side, slide the spring in from the front between the drag link and the tie rod. It makes it pretty easy to install. Install and tighten the spring retainers. The only adjustment necessary on the steering will be to the drag link. Now is a good time to loosen the adjusting sleeve for a later adjustment of the steering wheel. Replace the track bar bolt once the Jeep is on the ground. Have an assistant turn the steering wheel back and forth to align the track bar with the bracket. The new sway bar links install on the outside of the sway bar arm and on the inside of the axle bracket. Use the original bolts and tighten to factory specs. Connect the lower end of the limiting straps. Let the axle hang on the straps to align the strap bracket before final tightening. Reinstall the drive line and use some Loctite on the bolts. Reinstall the lower shock mounts. That should take care of the front. We'll move to the rear. Completely remove the rear shocks. Remove the driver's side track bar bolt. Remove the left lower control arm and replace it with the new arm. Now the sticker on that arm should be on the outside and toward the front of the Jeep. Install the front bolt only for now. Loosen the brake line support brackets and lower the axle. Remove the coil springs. The track bar bracket and the left lower control arm will share the same bolt. Swing the control arm up into place and position the track bar bracket for install. The original bolts will be used on the track bar as well as the lower control arm. Do not tighten any track bar hardware until it's completely installed. The track bar mounting hardware includes a sleeve or a spacer. Now that's used at the factory axle mount. Use the new bolts, sleeve, nut, and washer. Install the U-bolt nuts and washers. Go ahead and tighten them now. They'll be easy to tighten with the track bar out of the way. Swing the track bar into place into the new bracket before tightening. This will prevent bracket warpage as we tighten the sleeve bolt. Now later we'll install the track bar bolt with the Jeep on the ground. That'll just make it easier to align that bolt for install. Remove the stock left upper control arm. Replace it with the new arm, long side from the bend facing forward with the bend against the frame. All right, that's bend into the frame with the longer side after the bend facing forward. The rear upper control arms use a captured frame nut that requires the tab on that bracket to be indexed into an alignment slot on the inside of the frame. With the nut in position, start the bolt, then move to the rear. Install the rear bolt, but do not tighten. The upper speed bump cup snaps into the frame bump stop bell. Position the cup with the longer side of the slope or the taper facing the rear. There are also notches cut into the top of the cup. They index around the factory bump stop frame bracket. The cup will snap into place quite easily. A few taps with a dead blow and it's installed. Next, twist and push the bump stop into position. 
The sway bar links install with the looped end at the bottom and the ball joint end at the top with the stud and nut to the inside. Now the lower end mounts on the outside of the bracket as well. Reinstall the spring isolator and new rear coil springs. Use that provided wrench, it really helps with install of the spring retainer. The brake line extensions will use the existing hardware to mount the extension in the stock location. Use the supplied quarter inch bolt to attach the factory bracket to the new extension. Before mounting the bracket to the frame, make the necessary bends in the brake line and bracket to clear the sway bar link as it goes through its range of travel. Install the limiting strap nut certs in the existing frame holes. One will be used on each side. Use the same procedure as the fronts. For the lower limit strap mount, use the existing ABS line tie strap hole as a guide. Enlarge the hole with a die grinder or a porting tool to accept a half inch bolt. Use the top of the existing hole as the upper limit of the new hole. Bottom line, lower is better. Install the limit straps, but leave them loose enough that the mounting brackets can swivel. Tighten them once the axle is at full droop and supported by the straps. Bolt the lower bump pad into place with the extended end facing forward. The upper spring retainer should be located about three to four inches from the end of the coil wind. With the coil in place and with slight pressure on it, install the spring retainer. Now the upper nut and washer can be positioned prior to the bolt for a much easier install. With the nut in view, start the retainer bolt and tighten. Install the rear shocks and tighten. Be sure the left shock reservoir clears the track bar bracket. Tighten the limit straps while they are under load. Use a zip tie and loosely tie that ABS electrical line to the limit strap. Also use a zip tie on the lower bracket and secure the ABS line there as well. With the Jeep on the ground, sitting at ride height, Tighten all the control arms, track bar brackets, just anything that hasn't been tightened. This will ensure that the bushing load is in a neutral position throughout the Jeep. Before turning the ignition key on, do a quick sight check for steering wheel centering. Do a final test drive and adjust the steering wheel and then tighten the adjusting sleeve. We have got a brand new 2012 JK on the lift here today. We just wanted to show you a couple of changes that Chrysler has made in these JKs that will affect your Jeep in the event you decide to lift it. The first one being the front exhaust crossover and your drive line. It's really a tight tolerance that's running there. We've actually loosened the shock bolts and so forth on this front axle. We want to let it down just a little bit just to show you how far you can go before that exhaust makes contact with that crossover pipe. Whoa. Okay, we're actually, bring it up, we're about just barely off it right there. With the axle drop down, we can see where the shock fully extended is and where the axle is fully drooped until that drive line made contact. If we just measure that distance, we're just, what, just a two, two and a quarter inches is all we've dropped this axle. So we lowered the axle two and a quarter inches. So if we put any type of a lift on this at all, we're going to exceed the limit that the shock provides for the axle. And that front drive line is going to make contact with that exhaust pipe. The exhaust system is actually moved forward further than it used to be on older models. So all we need to do is bring this crossover pipe closer to that cross member and it'll gain us enough clearance that we can go ahead and, and lift the vehicle and still maintain some clearance between it and the axle. Now Jeep has spent a lot of time and effort on the exhaust systems on these 2012s. And if we change it much, we'll affect the performance. So what we did is we made a couple of exhaust spacers 
that will really just shift that exhaust back enough to gain us some clearance on that drive line without affecting the performance at all. So we've got two spacers. You'll notice one of them's just a little longer than the other one. We'll put the longer one on that passenger side and the shorter spacer we'll put into the driver's side. Use a 13 millimeter and remove the four exhaust flange bolts at the left and right crossover pipe collectors. Now to help with exhaust hanger position, loosen the Y pipe clamp where the Y is joining the front and rear sections of pipe. Remove the indexing stop. Now that's a small spot welded stop on the intermediate pipe where it's clamped into the Y pipe. Now that stop can be easily removed with an air chisel or a hand chisel or even a cutoff wheel on a die grinder. This will allow the pipe to slide further into the Y pipe to compensate for those spacers and the repositioning of that crossover pipe. The exhaust system can be easily pried back by using a pry bar between the front skid bar and the exhaust flange on the driver's side. Install the spacers in both sides before tightening. Now the short spacer is going to go in the driver's side pipe, while the longer spacer will be used in the passenger side. Position the spacers so that they line up the two sections of pipe as much as possible before tightening. Install the extended 8mm bolts provided in the kit and tighten them using that 13mm. Make sure there is good clearance around the exhaust system. Look closely by the flange where the driver's side pipe bends up over the front cross member. Also check where the pipe goes up over the rear axle. Now the top of the pipe gets pretty close to the floor cross member there, so make sure you have clearance. We've checked all our tolerances and everything clears nicely. The last step we need to do is to tighten up the clamp on that Y pipe. Once we've tightened that, let's move forward and take a look at that front drive line and just see what kind of clearance we've gained. As we lower it down, we can see that we can now measure a little over five inches of droop. We started out, it only dropped two inches before we ran out of clearance. We've gained a little over three inches. Now it's important to note that it doesn't matter what we do suspension-wise, moving exhaust, or anything else. We have pretty much maxed out that driveline angle. We can see here that that driveline cannot go any further without cutting the boot. If you lift your Jeep more than three inches, you'll definitely need to replace that front driveline.